it's Ronelle again from the International Association of Infant Massage. We're talking about um, the differences between massaging a baby and taking your baby to a therapist such as Julia. We, for us, it's really important to observe the right time to massage the baby. If we choose the wrong time, of course it's not us, it's the parent that's going to massage the baby. But if the parent chooses the wrong time, if the baby is not in the correct behavioral state, the baby will not enjoy the massage. And for us, it's really important that, the, that this should be a pleasurable and fun experience between the parents and the baby. So the best time to massage a baby would be when the baby is in a quiet, alert state. That's a very fancy word. I like to call it a good mood because parents usually know what their babies look like when they're in a good mood. And that's the best time to do massage. And whenever this changes, in other words, when the baby's cues tell us that the baby is not in a good mood anymore, then we know the baby has a different need and that need must be attended to first before we can continue the massage. Of course, it's also important to have the room, the environment for massage, a pleasant environment. So it needs to be a nice warm room, not too much extra stimulation in the room, especially in the first few months when the baby's brains do not filter so much stimulation yet. We need to be really careful that the environment is a is a familiar environment where there's not too much visual or auditory stimulation even uh, olfactory stimulation and if we wanted to play music because sometimes parents also need a little bit of relaxing music for them to relax to do the massage then the advice would be to use music with a very slow sort of beat um, like the typical spa or um, yoga music or whatever you would like to call it but the brain experts tell us that if the music has a beat slower than heartbeat, so we would listen for about 60 or less beats per minute, that tends to calm the brain down. So this would ideally be, you know, the lullaby kind of music to play during massage. In terms of timing coming for a therapy appointment, we are guided by practicality. When the parents are able to come, when I have free time and I it doesn't really have an effect on the therapy. In fact, I'm okay with seeing the baby when it's overtired. Um, it gives me a lot of information of how it's able to regulate itself. So I'm not offended at all if a baby cries or pukes or poos or all of them or needs a lot of uppies. That's information. Um, we book a whole hour for the baby, but we really don't work on the baby for an hour. I want the parents to feel okay to speak to me without feeling rushed. The baby will do a little bit of work, will work on the shoulder or the neck or the spine, have the baby take comfort in the parent, carry on a little bit, it's a very gentle process. So the amount of time we're doing therapy compared to the hour, there, is a, there are a lot of gaps for the baby to rest and recalibrate everything that happened. Um, I see parents often feel the pressure for their child to be behaving well and say hello auntie julia and i'll keep telling the child sit still sit still listen to auntie julia and it doesn't matter i'm i'm comfortable i love working with children and i'm not there to check your manners i'm not there to check if you can sit still i'm there to see what happens when you're asked to sit still and your body tells you you can't because you've got tension or trauma or discomfort somewhere because that's the area we need to work so timing wise is what is practical for each of us and i will work with the circumstances that show themselves um, i've only in 15 years once had a baby cry for the bulk of the session on the whole they settle very quickly because they're extremely relieved to be freed of what's happening in their body which is causing them discomfort so timing very different aspect for parents and massage and a child in therapy I'm Julia, I'm a craniosacral fascial therapist and I love working with young children. This is Renelle. Julia, I'm so happy you spoke about crying because um, of course when a baby is crying we will not massage the baby because that baby has got a different need but we allow crying in our classes and that's why we always say to parents in our classes your baby is allowed to be a baby. We spoke about communication in another clip and that's one of the ways that babies communicate is through crying so we always allow the baby to be a baby and like julia said they tend to settle quite quickly as well 
and often we see all the behavioral states displayed during one session of massage and you say your sessions are you know you you have an hour session we usually allow an hour to an hour and a half for our class times and that's also not doing massage for an hour and an hour and a half that will be way too much for for the parents and for the poor babies to handle but we fill up our class time with some theory that we give to the parents we have a parent to parent topic discussion so the rest of our class is really fun as well good to know lots of differences underlying concept respect working at the child's pace and very much empowering the parents in in, in navigating this journey with children it's not easy but it's definitely a lot of fun